there's a big problem in South America with uh, ships illegally dumping their oil. That's why all these penguins show up uh, every year. The penguins, they just, when they're migrating, they just cross the spots of oil. Once it gets oil, they lose their insulation, so they lose their ability to, to be dry because their feathers, they actually, they form like a barrier to the water. So whenever they get oil, this structure is, just breaks and then the water breaks through and touches the skin and then they get all wet underneath. They lose um, their, their body temperature to the water and then they get hypothermic and then they just come out of the water and whenever they're outside they stop eating and then they get dehydrated. Also one thing that they do is they, they want to get the oil off so they start preening and they preen desperately to actually align their feathers back to their normal structure so, it, so the water doesn't break in, right? So that when when they're printing, then they start swallowing oil, and and then the oil is very irritating and gets them to have um, hemorrhages in their stomach and their intestines. So whenever we get the birds uh, from the field, we get the oiled birds, right? So they're cold, they're dehydrated, they're anemic. So those are the things that we look for in the first place. So we get the bird, first of all what we do is we check their body temperatures to see if they're really, really cold. We just let them rest for a while to see if they um, regain their body temperature. So we put them under heat lamps. After a while, like an hour or so, if they recover, what we do is we do a quick exam. We uh, check their mouth, their eyes, their feet, and then we take a blood sample. And this, this first step, which is the stabilization period, is crucial to treating oiled birds. Because what people think that they have to do whenever they get an oiled bird is actually to wash it. But no, you have to stabilize it first, and then you, you have to one, two, three days, depending on the bird's um, blood, depending on the bird's body condition, you're going to wash it after it, after it approves uh, certain criteria. We rehydrate the bird and put it back into the heat lamp. Two days after, we're going to um, try and see if the bird's ready to be washed, so we take a new blood sample and and then if the bird approves criteria, it will be washed. Um, so the birds are washed with, with warm water. Uh, the, the water temperature is the same as the bird's body temperature. It's between 39 to 41 degrees Celsius with dish detergent. And then you just um, wash the bird and go on changing the water as long as it gets dirty, the water you change it into a new tub, and then um, the, the wash will be over whenever the bird is clean. You put the bird into the water with soap and then the water is clear, and then you, you put the bird into the rinse. The rinse has also to be thorough and, and very meticulous because you have to remove all the, the detergent out of the feathers. And then, after you move all that, you put the bird into the heat lamp. Only the next day this bird is going to eat, so you have to be sure that the bird is strong enough to, to be able to cope with all this the stress, because it's very stressful for them and they have to be strong.
after they're, they're, they're clean, the big goal is to get them to eat on their own, gain weight, and swim a lot, because swimming is whenever they're going to get back their waterproofing. So whenever they're waterproof and they have um, good body condition, they, they approve blood criteria, then they're, be, they're going to be able to go. Unless the governments get together and get a solution for preventing ships from dumping oil in the sea, um, we will still be getting oil penguins every year. Well, to me, uh, every time I, I look at them here, it's, um, I feel that they have been through so much that it's going to be big relief for me and just to see them swimming free will be just wonderful. To learn more about this and other IFA projects around the globe, log on to www.ifaw.org today and help IFA create a better world for animals and people.